Next Wave DV presents NAB 2013. Made possible by Kessler Crane, innovative tools for filmmakers. Red Rock Micro, introducing the one man crew. Zeiss, we make it visible. We're at the small HD booth with Barrett talking about your new monitor system. Now, I've got two small HDs. I love them to death. They're on every production I use. Uh, but it'd be nice to have a few extra pro features, you know, waveform, stuff like that. I know that you guys have been listening to that need, and you guys have a great solution out there now. Yeah, well, you know, we've done the best we can with the DP7 here to accommodate all of those <laughs> super high-end kind of pro features that you would hope to see on the very highest-end monitors. Um, so uh, we've got the waveform, the vector scope. Um, histogram, RGB parade, uh, and so all those things are very easily accessible. You can see right now I've sort of got the touch screen mode on where when I, I touch the screen and it brings up all of my features so that I can switch on quickly. Um, so I got false color I can turn on and off. Um, and I can go down to RGB parade, switch on, on and off. Um, and it's very easy to customize this, this whole menu as well. So you can see every, every one of these flags, essentially, you can program to whatever you want. And there's three pages of those flags that you can switch as well. Um, and each of these scopes are full screenable. You can fill the screen with them or put them in sort of a you know, quarter, lower quarter uh, sort of configuration. And these scopes are also uh, pass throughable, if that's a word. Uh, you can basically send them downstream. So, for instance, if you've got a cheap HDMI monitor sitting around that all it's got is HDMI uh, and you want a waveform on that, you can take a signal in to the DP7, turn on the waveform onto the pass through output and have that do full screen on that external monitor where on the DP7 you can actually have it just be a clean signal. So you can actually send that without having to take up any space on this monitor. So you're essentially getting like a full screen waveform monitor which would be pretty expensive if purchased you know, separately as a standalone unit, but you've got a cheap one because you're able to do that within the DP7. Right, you're not relying on color accuracy of that monitor, all you're doing is using that for reference. Exactly, yeah, yeah. So, and that works for all the features as well, so anything that you can switch on in the DP7 you can send down. Another pretty common uh, scenario that you might find or is a uh, if you're shooting on an anamorphic lens, uh, you've got sort of a squish signal coming in. Monitoring that is can be kind of a hassle, so bring that into the DP7, do the anamorphic de-squeeze, and send that out to any other monitors you want. So. What I'm seeing a lot of too is, is cameras that are shooting super flat profiles, so Ari Alexa, Canon S-Log, stuff like that where you want to kind of see a little bit of what it would look like in a grade sure. so that you're not losing too much in the shadows or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what about that? Can you do that? Yeah, uh, we accept all the 3D lookup tables for every kind of log format that's out there. So that'll load onto the SD card, which slides into the side here. You just load it in, and you're good to go. Now, what if you wanted to see uh, a clean, regular look of the of your S log on here, but then pass through uh, to your, say your client monitor a nice, you know, somewhat graded look of like a Rec 709 or something like that? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, so tell us a little bit more about some of the features and navigation. Is it only touch screen? Is there a... a uh, no, mode? well, it's switchable. The, the touch screen, uh, you know, it's it's a nice feature to have, but some people don't want to get the fingerprints on it. So uh, you, if you're wearing gloves or something. Yeah, if you're wearing gloves. And, you know, to accommodate the sun hood, you want to be able to click that on, and you're not going to have to <laughs> be able to man manipulate it that way. So you can use the scroll wheels. There's dual scroll wheels, one on each side, uh, here and here and you can use those to, to do the interface as well. So, And um, for the high bright version, we don't have a touchscreen interface as the OLED version does, and so the, there's buttons on the front for that. So. so can you tell us the differences a little bit between the high bright and the OLED? Yeah, basically OLED is for when you want uh, to see the maximum out of your camera as far as the color and the contrast range. Uh, OLED is very capable when it comes to being able to display the full range, the full gamuts of color. Uh, it actually encompasses the Rec. 709 color gamut and you can limit the DP7 to display just the Rec. 709 gamut or you can let it go unlimited basically to go beyond it. Um, and so that, that's kind of what OLED's all about. And it's able to reproduce a very 
wide level of color compared to LCD. Uh, and the other point about it is the contrast ratio. Because of the way that the technology works, um, each individual pixel is a red, green, and blue light. And so when those lights are off, they're black. And so that's why you get such a deep black point on the OLED monitor. Um, can you tell us a little bit about now the, the Hybrite and why it would, what productions that would be better for? Yeah, sure. The, uh, the Hybrite version is a 1500 nit uh, outdoor viewable uh, LCD display. And can you uh, so just briefly tell us what is what's like your D standard DP6? What would the, the right a DP6 on? I believe is 300 nits, and so you're getting quite a bit more than right. that for the uh, for the high bright version, and it makes a big difference. So it, it basically means you're not going to have to use a sun hood when you're outdoors. You can easily see what you've got. You can frame it up and be able to see the color because a lot of the time you can kind of you know take a display outside or take your cell phone and you can kind of see a hint of what's going on but you can't really see much in the way of, of color and detail but uh, the 1500 nit hybrid really draws out all those details that make it much easier to see without you know the aid of a sunshade. When you, well when you're shooting outdoors you know if you have to bury your head in the sun hood you, you can't really interact with the scene as much as sure. you prefer to. Exactly and you know you have more than one person viewing a monitor you know that becomes an issue as well with the sunshade, so that's that aids in, in that way as well. So we're we're expecting the the Hybrite to be popular with Steadicam guys as well. Oh yeah. Um, so you know they'll be able to mount it down there with obviously a sun sunshade is uh, not very practical in, in that circumstance. So we're expecting it to be popular with them. And uh, it also has uh, all the DP7 models have accelerometer and gyro capability. Uh, so there's going to be a level meter, basically tells you when you're dead, dead set level. So. so let's talk a little bit about the SD card. I know that it's not just for software, there's this other functionality to it as well. Right, right. Uh, SD card, you can also load features or take, take basically your settings that you've got set up on the DP7 because it's pretty customizable. There's a lot of things that you might tailor to your own needs. And you can save those settings on the SD card and pop them in another DP7 to keep the settings. Uh, the main thing that we hope to use the SD card for is the 720p proxy recording, uh, which basically just allows you to record uh, sort of a, a daily sort of 720p. It's not anything that you would want to take into the edit bay and, and mess with grading or anything, but it's basically just so you can view your clips out on set without having to take off your recording box, offload the clips, and, and mess with all that. So it just allows you to quickly access and view your clips. Right, but for, for any any level of red shooter or, or something where dealing with the clips, playing the bags is a little bit more of a hectic, you can have that option. Plus you can then take the monitor, say hand it off to a director exactly. for them to do stuff while you're still working with the exactly. camera. And uh, in addition to that, I mean, if you've got, for instance, a Paralynx Arrow, the little wireless transmitter plugged onto the back, you can be, you know, offset or be, be some quite a distance away. You can record your own clips and view them back, no problem. So we expect those kind of functions you know, to be, you know, very popular with directors and and Steadicam operators as well, because a lot of times Steadicam operator is going to get to the end of his clip and he's going to want to make sure that you know everything went right, but. You know, in traditional shooting, it's kind of difficult to do. So if he's able to uh, view his proxy clip back, then you know that's going to save a whole lot of time. Now, I'm sure a lot of people are going to ask: Is there any integration with the record functionality of any of the cameras to trigger the yes. proxy record? Yeah, exactly. The SDI will be a record trigger. So yeah, if you've got the monitor attached to a camera through SDI, you don't want to have to hit record and record right. on the same yeah, on two different devices. So it'll take care of that. Great. So that I can see great being great. As you said, for proxy, <laughs> if you if you are shooting red and you want to edit that, and then you can easily then trans you know, right, transfer right. that over later on, on your final edit. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, what, uh, what's the availability? What's the price point on these monitors? Uh, $26.99 is the price of the OLED version, and $29.99 is the Hybrite. Uh, OLED will be available in May, and the Hybrite in June. All right, great. Well, thanks for your time, Barrett. Thanks, sir. Subscribe to Next Wave TV, where filmmakers get educated.